the Rumble Bomb. This is a fast sinking Paragon style nymph I designed with the same colors as my Rumble Bug. I tied that a few years back with Tim Flagler on his Tight Lines video channel, and it's been one of the best selling nymphs on our Guideflies website. This fly changes it up a little with some brand new materials that I got from Semperfly and inspired me to revisit this pattern. So for the hook, I'm going to be starting out with a heavy barbless number 14 style jig hook, a 3.3 millimeter silver slotted tungsten bead head. The rear hot spot thread is going to be a wax 6.0 fluorescent orange from Semperfly. That's getting a Peridone body quill in fluorescent orange over it. Then the main body will be a glow bright number 15 fluorescent purple, and that's getting topped with some iridescent purple Peridone body quill. The tail is going to be some medium speckled Coke de Leon. You can use whatever you like there. The resin that we're going to top that with is going to be some Solaris Bone Dry, and it's going to get a little spot of black uh, above the bead there for the wing case. And you can change these colors out. Use black thread for the main body. Uh, brown works good for a Frenchie style fly. But these have a lot of fluorescence to them, so that really adds to the uh, effectiveness of the pattern. So this is what we're going to want it to look like when we're done tying the fly here. It's just a nice smooth tapered peridone nymph with our rumble bug fly style. So we want to just start the bead there with the uh, small hole going through the hook point and the main part of the bead sitting over the hook eye so it rides up like a jig. Now we're just going to start our 6-0 fluorescent orange wax thread here behind the bead head and create a jam knot to keep it centered on the hook. And a good quality bead is going to have a nice small slot to it so you're getting a lot of tungsten for your money on those beads and the uncle ones are really really good quality tungsten. So we're just going to get a good thread base going towards the hook bend and it's going to give our tailing material something to lock into and start the taper of the fly. So I'm going to use the Coke de Leon and just pull six to eight of those fibers off at 90 degrees to the quill and just trim them off at the base nice and flush there so they're lined up when we tie them on and I'm just going to measure those from the back of the bead to the hook bend so you get a nice short tail to match that chunky little body and I'm going to use that thread to just sort of center them right over the top of the hook shank and that Looks about right. And just get them tied up to the back of the bead and trim them down. Help get your taper going. Sharp scissors are really important for tying these small flies like this. Now I'm going to tie in my rear hot spot peridone body quill and fluorescent orange. That's a new material I just got in from Semperfly that I really like. Adds a lot of dimension to the hot spots. So I'm going to take about two inches of that and tie that in right behind the bead head. Pretty much my tie-in point for most of the materials on a nymph. And just spin that thread counterclockwise to open it up and flatten it out. It's a 6-0 so it's a little bit thicker. You don't want to Pay attention to your thread wraps with the stuff. So just building a nice even taper up towards the bead. And now I'm just going to take touching wraps of this body quill up about midway up the hook shank and then lock it down. And take your time with this step. If you're not used to working with this material, it's pretty slippery, so you can use some hackle pliers if you want or the rotary function of your vise if you have a rotary vise for tying purposes here I'm just taking my time and going hand over hand and I'll just trim that down there and now I'm going to bring my orange thread up to the back of the bead and just whip finish that off And everything looks good. And next I'm going to get my fluorescent purple 
Glowbright ready. You can also use, I've got some new uh, Fluorobright in purple from Semperfly. It looks really cool too if you want a little bit darker body on there. But same thing, start that right behind the bead. Yeah, and this is a thicker floss, so you're going to want to pay attention to your, your thread wraps here and open that up if you need to. There's that Fluorobright. Really cool material. And some iridescent purple Peridigo and Quill is going to go over that purple body. On the Rubble Bug, I used some Mylar Tinsel, Pearl Mylar. This is a little less flashy, blends in a little bit more, and gives it some uh, segmentation. A little bit more subtle than the uh, Mylar Pearl Tinsel. So I'm going to take that back to right about the hook point, give myself about three millimeters of hot spot. And just take a couple thread wraps there to build that taper up towards the bead head. And you can spin that again just to flatten it out. Typically these flies are pretty chunky and really designed to be heavier. I'm, this one I'm keeping a little bit thinner. Just matches the little thin winter may find them a little bit better that I'm trying to match up right now, but you can tie this really fat if you wanted to. So once you're happy with that taper, you just take that body quill and wrap it forward here. Try to get nice touching turns if you can. And if they slip, you know, it's not a big deal because it's a little nymph. Comes at the fish pretty quick, but this one gets down very fast, so. And just lock that in. I like to tie things in up against that slot on the jig bead. It's actually going to be the bottom of the hook when the, when the fly is uh, going through the water column. And we're just going to want to give that a couple turn whip finish to lock that down. And now the next step is what makes it a pair to go. We're going to put some UV resin over it. And I'm using some Solara's bone dry because this stuff cures really tack free and has a pretty tough finish to it. So. Just gonna take a bodkin because it's a small body. I want to be pretty exact where I put it, and I'm gonna put that over the threads and just sort of let it soak in a bit. And gravity will kind of pull it around the the body of the fly to help get that taper, and she's the point of the bodkin to get it in and fill in those little spots. You're going to probably want two bodkins for this fly because we're going to use some black resin for the little wing case. And once you're, once you're happy with how that looks, you know, take a second, just get it right. So you get it how you want it to look. And that's pretty good. So I'm just going to hit it with the, with the light now. And that, that bigger Solaris torch works great. I mean, it really sets the resin fast and uh, hard permanently. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of black. This is a Solaris medium that I, uh, that I dye black. And I'm just going to make my wing case there. And just a little highlight on the fly. You can put it on the over the slot of the bead if you want, over the <clears throat> over the behind the hook eye, wherever you want to put it. You'll see it all different places from different tires. But that is the Rumble Bomb. Hope you guys like it. You know, tie it in a few different colors. You can do them in 14s and 16s. Down to 18s would be a cool 
little fly. But that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know how it works for you. <laughs>